Have I mentioned that the most fun about writing cookbooks, for me, is writing the headnotes, the stories behind, and describing also what the, re the recipe is like? Uh, it's ice cream season now. Of course, it's always ice cream season in our house. And I thought it'd be fun to do some headnote reading from Rose's Ice Cream Bliss. So the first chapter is flavorful ice cream. And did you know that America's favorite flavor is vanilla? This is my best excuse me, my best vanilla ice cream. And here's the photo of how it looks like in the cone, which we also have a recipe for in the book. America's favorite flavor, and when using vanilla beans and this recipe, one of my top favorites as well. The larger proportion than usual of cream to milk, the high amount of egg yolk, and the choice of my favorite vanilla beans make this my ultimate expression of vanilla ice cream. Next is a variation, because there are several, of course, variations on vanilla ice cream. This is called Bust My Bourbon Balls, and trust me, I didn't give it its name. That was Woody. That's a guy thing. You will need eight bourbon balls, 160 grams, about one cup, and that's on page 182. When ready to churn the ice cream, cut the bourbon balls in half or quarter them. During churning, when the ice cream has reached the consistency of soft serve and begins to ball up around the dasher, remove the dasher and use a large spoon or spatula to fold in the bourbon balls. And the third recipe that I'm going to read the head note for is, yes, olive oil ice cream. The first time I had it, I thought, how can that be any good? The texture, well, it's amazing. I'm going to read the head note. I first tasted this exceptional ice cream two decades ago at the Monkey Bar in New York City. It was the silkiest ice cream I've ever experienced. I had no idea it contained olive oil until Chef Andrew Chase gave me his recipe. It called for a large amount of glucose powder, which is not readily available to home cooks. But now that liquid glucose is more readily available, I finally decided to adapt the recipe. The flavor of the olive oil is very melodious and subtle and stays in the background, but of course, it depends on your choice of olive oil. I especially like Greek olive oils with a slightly grassy aroma and not too much peppery flavor. If desired, serve the ice cream with a garnish of sliced fresh kumquats. By the way, my mother gave me these amber beads from Russia and they always reminded me of kumquats, coincidentally. Ah, Turkish stretchy ice cream. The uniqueness of this extraordinary Turkish ice cream <clears throat> is its texture, sticky, chewy, and incredibly stretchy. After my grandson, Owen Daw, enjoyed a trip to Turkey, he described ice cream vendors teasing customers by leaving the long ice cream paddle in place after handing them the ice cream top cone, and then magically lifting away the ice cream right out of the cone. It took a bit of research to unmail the romantic mystery of the ice cream. My pastry chef friend from Turkey, Yusuf Yaran, explained that the key ingredient is a powder called salep, which comes from the root of an orchid. He wrote that there are tons of orchids in the city of, I hope I pronounce this right, I'm sure I won't, Karamanmaras, Turkey, but it is a long process and only a few grams come from each flower's root. You can order it on the internet. Aside from procuring the salep, this recipe couldn't be easier. The flavor is up to you. A few drops of rose water or a little vanilla extract or raspberry essence are all lovely additions. A topping of chopped pistachio is also traditional. And next up will be berry, fruit, and vegetable chapter.